Yep. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. If you're a fan of 80s movies, then you've most probably heard of the writer, director, producer, John Hughes. After all, he had a reputation for discovering and bringing out the best in young actors. His biggest writing and producing success was for the movie Home Alone, which was released in 1990 and turned the simple tale of a young boy being forgotten by his family while leaving for a vacation into a mega blockbuster 285 million dollar domestic box office hit, spawning two sequels as a result of that success. Most of his work is set in the Chicago metropolitan area and features coming-of-age teen comedy films which often combined magic realism with honest depictions of suburban teenage life. Although I must admit, all these movies have families living in enormous houses that I could never have imagined living in, except if I came from a really wealthy family. Taking that detail aside, his movies were enormously popular and some of the biggest box office successes of the 80s and 90s. So who is he exactly? Well, John Wilden Hughes Jr. was born on February 18, 1950 in Lansing, Michigan. He was the only boy and had three sisters. Growing up, he was in the neighborhood that was mostly girls and old people, therefore he spent a lot of his time by himself, imagining things. At the age of 13, Hughes' family moved to Northbrook, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. Hughes attended Grove Middle School, later going on to Glenbrook North High School, which gave him inspiration for the films that eventually made his reputation. This is also where he met Nancy Ludwig, a cheerleader and his future wife. As a young kid, John Hughes found escape within movies and was an avid music fan including The Beatles and Bob Dylan. This love of music definitely shows in many of his movies as they are packed full with 80s iconic music. After dropping out of the University of Arizona, Hughes began selling jokes to well-established performers such as Rodney Dangerfield and Joan Rivers. These jokes eventually led him to working for National Lampoon magazine for which he became a regular contributor and one of his first stories written for them called Vacation 58 which was inspired by his family trips as a child, became the basis for the film National Lampoon's Vacation, which tells the story of Clark Griswold and his wife accompanied by their children as they are driving from Illinois to a California amusement park. As Clark increasingly fixates on a beautiful woman driving a sports car, the Griswold family deal with car problems and the death of a family member. They do eventually reach Los Angeles, but more craziness ensues when Clark thinks that the vacation is being derailed again. John Hughes' actual first credited screenplay was for National Lampoon's Class Reunion, which he wrote while still on staff at the magazine and tells the story of an alumni of Lizzie Borden High School called Walter Baylor, who is still traumatized by a nasty senior prank he endured. Years later, he breaks out of an asylum and returns to his school during a class reunion to wreak havoc on those who drove him insane. The movie completely flopped and was National Lampoon's second attempt at recreating the success of Animal House. Luckily, the movie Vacation did extremely well at the box office, which followed that same year with a script entitled Mr. Mom and earned him a three-film deal with Universal Pictures. His first directing gig was for the 1984 movie Sixteen Candles, which he also wrote. This movie tells the story of Samantha who has her current life overshadowed by her sister's upcoming wedding. As she faces her upcoming 16th birthday, she is filled with adolescent dread. Sam has a crush on an older boy Jake, but worries that her chastity will be a turnoff for the popular senior. Meanwhile, she is constantly turning down a nerdy classmate called Ted, who seems to be the only boy interested in her at school. The movie was very successful, but is criticized nowadays for the stereotypical portrayal of an Asian foreign student and also the very questionable way that Jake and Ted talk about a drunk girl who has passed out at a party. While looking at these movies, we cannot forget that they are from another period of time, maybe even 
much more naive than nowadays, and it's important to take these stories with a grain of salt and enjoy them for what they were at the time, and not as if written nowadays. During the audition process of Sixteen Candles, Hughes had asked his agent for headshots of young actresses, and among those he received were those of Molly Ringwald and Ali Sheedy. Ali had auditioned for the role of Sam, but was dropped because John Hughes thought that Ringwald was a better fit for the part. Nevertheless, he put Ali Sheedy's headshot over his desk and called her a year later to act in The Breakfast Club, for which he had her in mind for the lead role. In 1985, Hughes's directed and written movie The Breakfast Club actually came out. The main theme that is explored in this movie is the constant struggle of the American teenager to be understood by adults and by themselves. In The Breakfast Club, five high school students all have to attend detention on a Saturday under the supervision of a power-hungry principal. The misfit group includes a rebel, a princess, an outcast, a brainiac, and a jock type. On the surface, the students have little in common with each other. However, as the day rolls on, they eventually bond over a common disdain for the aforementioned issues of peer pressure and parental expectations. Stereotyping is another theme. Once the obvious stereotypes are broken down, the characters empathize with each other's struggles, dismiss some of the inaccuracies of their first impressions, and discover that they are more similar than different. On an interesting note, The Breakfast Club was actually supposed to be Hughes' directorial debut and not Sixteen Candles. His initial request to direct the film was met with resistance from the producers as he lacked filmmaking experience. Ultimately, he was able to convince them that due to the modest $1 million budget and his single location shoot, he could greatly minimize their risk. Both Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club were big box office successes. This led to the filming of Weird Science, which was also released in 1985. When this movie was initially released, the New York Times wrote that Mr. Hughes shows that he can share the kind of dumb joke that only a 14-year-old could live, and there are enough movie-going 40-year-old boys to make a hit out of Weird Science. This movie was actually much less weird than it could have been, and is pretty much your average kids in heat film with a bunch of raunchy humor. The film tells the story of two 15-year-old kids who design their ideal woman on a computer and a freak electrical accident brings her to life in the form of the lovely superhuman Lisa. She outfits the boys with cool clothes and pretty much grants any of their wishes. After standing up to a couple of bullies, Lisa decides to throw a mega party at the boys' house. Everything spirals out of control from that point onwards. Weird Science has a very interesting concept, but is hardly in the same league as his previous two films and can come out as goofy at times, although it is still worth watching as there are some laughs to be had by its ridiculous premise and enjoyable performances. This movie was successful enough to have a television series made uh, based on it, which ran from 1994 to 1998 even though Hughes didn't have any attachment to it. In 1986, John Hughes released another teen comedy entitled Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hughes wrote the screenplay in less than a week, and filming began in September 1985 and finished in November. This movie features many Chicago landmarks, including the then Sears Tower, Wrigley Field, and the Art Institute of Chicago. For him, this movie was his love letter to Chicago. This movie tells the story of Ferris Bueller, who has an uncanny skill at cutting classes and getting away with it. Intending to make one last duck out before graduation, Ferris calls in sick, borrows his friend's Ferrari, and embarks on a one-day journey through the streets of Chicago. His high school principal, knowing Ferris's track record of lies, is determined to find him and catch him red-handed. The movie made $70.1 million at the box office and probably is the film that captures best the almost noxious yet somehow lovable quality of real-life John Hughes. Well, this concludes the first part of Hughes' career retrospective, where we explore his early rise to fame with writing and directing his extremely successful teen comedies. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. In the second video, we will look at John Hughes' departure from teen comedies to more adult comedy movies, and his departure from the limelight in order to spend more time with his family. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.